Hi, in this video, I will be demonstrating to you how to perform tests concerning means if the population standard deviation is known. For the first demonstration, let's consider example 5.1. A manufacturer of sports equipment has developed a new synthetic fishing line that he claims has a mean breaking strength of 8 kilograms with a population standard deviation of 0.5 kg. Test the hypothesis that the population mean is equal to 8 kg against the alternative, that is, the population mean is not equal to 8 kg, if a random sample of 50 lines is tested and found to have a mean breaking strength of 7.8 kg. Use a 0.01 level of significance. The first step that we need to do is to identify the given. Based on the scenario, the population mean here or the hypothesized value is 8 kilograms. The population standard deviation is 0 0.5 kilograms. The sample mean is 7.8 kilograms. The sample size is 50. And the level of significance is 0 0.01, which is denoted by alpha. Next, we formulate the hypothesis. Our null hypothesis here is mu is equal to 8 kilograms, whereas our alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to 8 kilograms, which can be found in the situation that we have here. Step 3 is to identify the critical region. Since we are dealing with a non-directional hypothesis, as seen in our alternative hypothesis, this is not equal to, we have the following illustration below. So this is our normal distribution curve. And we want to identify the critical regions for both left and the right tail of our distribution. So this one. So in this case, you want to know the value of Z that is associated with these lines. Now to identify the associated value of Z, we will refer to our level of significance, which is 0 0.01. And with that, the level of confidence is 99%. Then we need to identify the associated z-score of the middle 99 of a normal distribution curve. And the middle 99 is equivalent to 0 0.495 and 0 0.495. Checking our standard normal table, the closest value for 0 0.495 are the following. 0 0.4949. And 0 0.4951. Both of these values are equidistant to the desired value, which is 0 0.495. Therefore, we will get the associated z score of these two values. So we have 2.57 and 2.58. Therefore, the critical value for this is equivalent to z is equal to 2.57 plus 2.58 divided by 2, which is equal to 2.575. Therefore, these values here is equal to 2.575, and this one is equal to negative 2.575. Negative 2.575 and positive 2.575 is our critical regions. Later, when we will make our conclusion, these values now will be our basis. 
Next, we will calculate the value of z based on the given scenario. To do that, we will use the formula z is equal to x bar minus mu all over sigma divided by square root of n. Or sample mean is equal to 7.8. Or population mean is equal to 8. Our population standard deviation is equal to 0.5. And our sample size is equal to 50. Using our calculator, we will solve the value of z. That is 7.8 minus 8. 0 0.5 divided by square root of 50 and that is about negative 2.83 2.83 in the final step we will now formulate our decision based on the given information that we have solved here since the calculated z is beyond this critical region. Negative 2.83 is somewhere here if we will try to locate its location. So it's in the shaded region. We now reject the null hypothesis and accept HA. With that, we conclude that the average breaking strength is not equal to 8 kilograms, but it is in fact less than 8 kilograms on average. Let's consider another example, which is example 5.2. A random sample of 100 recorded deaths in the Philippines during the past year showed an average lifespan of 71.8 years, with a population standard deviation of 8.9 years. Does this seem to indicate that the average lifespan today is greater than 70 years? Use a 0.05 level of significance. So the first step is to identify the given. So we have our population mean or the hypothesized value, which is equal to 70 years. So this one. Our population standard deviation is equal to 8.9 years according to the scenario. So the population standard deviation is 8.9 years. The sample mean is equal to 71.8 years according to the scenario here. So this 71.8 years was calculated from a random sample of 100 recorded deaths in the Philippines. N here is equal to 100, whereas our alpha, which is the level of significance, is equal to 0 0.05. Step two is to identify the null and the alternative hypothesis. Notice that what we are trying to test here is that if the average lifespan is greater than 70 years. From here, we can actually uh, formulate the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis here is that the population mean is greater than 70 years. Whereas, the null hypothesis is that the population mean is equal to 70 years. Always remember that the null hypothesis is formulated in this way. It is always equal sign. Step 3 is to identify the critical regions. So we will now draw our normal distribution curve. This is our normal distribution curve. Greater than, so this is a one-tail test or a directional hypothesis. And greater than is located here because it's greater than 70. If this is the population mean, so the greater than uh, argument is located at the right portion of our um, population mean. So we want to know the value of z.
And this is now our critical region. Now to identify the associated z-score of this, we must refer to our level of significance. So our level of significance is 0 0.05. Therefore, we want to create a 95% uh, confidence level. To identify the confidence level, all we need to do is to subtract 0 0.05 from 1. So we want to identify the 95th percentile. To identify the 95th percentile, we know that from the center going to the left, that is equivalent to 0 0.5. Therefore, the remaining area here is equal to 0 0.45. Now, we refer to our standard normal table and we want to locate the closest value to 0 0.45. And it appears that it is these values. It's 0 0.4495 and 0 0.4505. We will now get the associated z-score of these values. That is this one, this one, this one. So the critical z is the average of the two value. That is 1.64 plus 1.65 over 2, which is equal to 1.645. So this one is equal to 1.645. So step 4, we want to compute the value of Z based on the given information. Using the formula Z is equal to X bar, minus the population mean or the hypothesized population mean over sigma divided by square root of n. So our sample mean is equal to 71.8 years minus population mean which is 70 over the population standard deviation which is 8.9 divided by the square root of n which is equal to 100. Using our calculator, we compute the value of Z, which is 71.8 minus 70. And here in our denominator, we have 8.9 divided by square root of 100. And that is about 2.02. That is 2.02. And 2.02 is way above our critical region. It is located in the shaded region. Therefore, our decision is to reject HO and accept HA, which means that the average lifespan today is greater than 70 years. For our last example, let's consider example 5.3, the average length of time for students to register for the first semester classes at a certain college has been 50 minutes with a population standard deviation of 10 minutes. A new registration procedure using modern computing machines is being tried. If a random sample of 12 students had an average registration time of 48 minutes under the new system, thus the hypothesis that the population mean is now less than 50 minutes using a level of significance of 0.01. So our first step is to identify the given in the scenario. The hypothesized mean or the population mean is 50 minutes. Our population standard deviation is 10 minutes. Our sample mean is 48 minutes according to the scenario. So 48 minutes was calculated from a sample of 12 students. N here is 12, whereas our alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Step 2 is to formulate our hypothesis. 
So according to the scenario, we want to test the hypothesis that the population mean is now less than 50 minutes. So we now have the alternative. The alternative is the population mean is less than 50 minutes. And therefore, our null hypothesis is equal to this. The population mean is equal to 50 minutes. Step 3 is to identify the critical region. So we will now draw our normal distribution curve. And less than argument, um, it, that is located in the left side of our mean. So it is somewhere here. Therefore, the critical region is somewhere here beyond that value. And we want to identify the value of Z in that position. And we know from the center going to the right, that is equivalent to 0.5. We will take note of that. Now, going back to the level of significance, we have 0 0.01. Therefore, the confidence level that we want to create here is 0 0.99. And therefore, the remaining area is 0 0.49. Therefore, we want to know the upper 99% or equivalently the first percentile. Going back to our Z table, the closest value is this value. And the associated Z score is 2.33. Hence, the value of our Z here, or the critical region, is negative 2.33. It is negative because it's on the left side of our mean, or the population mean. So take note of the position of your Z when assigning your critical region. Next, we calculate the calculated Z. And the formula is X bar minus population mean all over sigma divided by square root of n. So our sample mean is 48 minutes. Our population mean is 50 minutes. Our population standard deviation is 10 minutes. And our sample size in this case is 12. Using our calculator, we solve that is 48 minus 50 over 10 divided by square root of 12. And that is about negative 69. And negative 0.69 is somewhere here, which is not beyond the value or the critical value, which is negative 2.33. And therefore, our conclusion is we failed to reject the null hypothesis. This means that we may assume that the average length of time for students to register using the new procedure may be the same with the previous one. So there was no improvement after all, based on empirical evidence on average. So that's how we perform tests concerning means if the population standard deviation is known. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.